After the whistle starts where this happened out of Bellwood Antis, Penns Valley quarterback Jackson Romick goes deep to Danny Kerstetter. Let's take another look at that with a one-handed grab, starting, a, uh, starting us off strong. But would Penns Valley keep the hot streak alive? After the whistle starts right now. Hi, I'm AJ Sisson. We'll have more on that game, plus more action from around District 6. And I'm Logan Mirandis. Plus, a look at the nation's leading rusher here in Pennsylvania and Penn State's preparations as they get ready for a battle against the Ohio State Buckeyes. All that coming up and more on After the Whistle. Let's go! <laughs> It was senior day for Bellwood Antis hosting Penns Valley. You see the fans getting excited. It's senior day out on Penns Valley towards the end of the season, starting out in the first quarter. And Ty Walton going to pound one in from one yard out for the score as the Rams went up 7-0. And the next drive, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's our play of the week. As, da as Danning Kerstetter going to come down with a one-handed grab. Take a look at that replay again with his right hand covered. And... Penns Valley going up 14-0. Still in the first quarter, roaming again to Miles Brooks, breaking a tackle, and he has an open lane out for the 51-yard catch and run. Rams already up 21-0. In the very next drive, the, Mike, the Rams' Micah Good going to jump the route and take it all the way back, duking out towards his right for the pick six. And this game got out of hand quickly as the Rams would go on to win 42-0. Penns Valley improves to 8-2 on the season, while Bellwood Antis ends the year 6-4. Uh, Joining us now in studio is Jude Wozniak, who's on the sideline for tonight's game. Jude, what stood out to you tonight? Well, our Logan, we saw the fast start for Penns Valley, and they really blew Bellwood Antis out of the water. Let's take a look. It may have been senior night for the Bellwood Antis Blue Devils, but for the Penns Valley Rams, they decided to play spoiler tonight. For the Rams, it was the offensive line dominating in the trenches, which led to big play after big play. Uh, our O-line, I mean, they came out, big plays, and then just gave me the time I need to get the ball to our playmakers, and we are just putting points on the board right away. For senior Miles Brooks, he has the confidence in his speed and playmaking abilities to always get the job done. Uh, speed kills, and that's, that's what I like to do. I like to get out in space and just make plays and put us in a better position to win. After a dominant showing by the Penns Valley Rams on the road, Coach Martin Tobias and his players will play the waiting game to see who they have up next in the playoffs. Well, uh, honestly, until tonight, I hadn't really thought about the playoffs or even looked at it, so I don't know what the situation truly is. I just know that we've got some momentum going into the playoffs, and we want to keep riding that. Two weeks ago, the Rams picked up a huge victory against the Tyrone Golden Eagles when they scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to mount a comeback. Ever since then, they've ridden that momentum that Coach Tobias is talking about. The Penns Valley Rams might be one of the hottest teams in the area. Now, the playoff pressure is on. For After the Whistle, I'm Jude Wozniak. Thanks, Jude. Let's head back to Center County now, as Bald Eagle will take on the Purchase Line football team. We're going we're gonna to go and we're going to see that both teams were unable to get a lot of scoring done in the first quarter here at Alumni Stadium. We'll see Carson Nagel has his block pass at the line of scrimmage and then picked off by John Hughes. There will be no scoring by the offense there, but let's go early in the second quarter. Purchase Line with the ball, but Bald Eagle will get the interception this time. Trey Green hauls it in, putting his team into great position, putting Cameron Dubs in great spot to get the 20-yard rush into the end zone, making the first score of the game and 7-0 for the Eagles. Again in the second quarter, Bald Eagles with the 20-yard line. Carson Nagel will find Wyatt Spackman for the 20-yard catch and run, making it to 13-0 after the block extra point. But just before the end of the half, John Attic will take the snap, throw it downfield and picked off by Gavin Eckley. He'll take it to the house for a pick six, making it 19-0. That will be the final score of the game. Bald Eagle will end their season 7-3, while Purchase Line will end below 500 at 4 and 6. Next we head to Penn Cambria as the Panthers take on the Lions at home. As you see the Penn Cambria Panther fans getting excited for this matchup. We'll open up here on the first drive. Garrett Harold going to run it in down towards the near side for a five-yard score. Penn Cambria going to take a quick 7-0 quick lead on their second offensive drive. It'll be Gavin Harold instead. He'll, kick, he'll take the catch and run down the sideline. He's got a long play ahead, but wait, he's going to cut it right back up towards the middle. He's not ju done just yet. That's a 64-yard touchdown, and that would put Cam Penn Cambria up 13-3 
home team getting off to a fast start early in front of their crowd. They would be up 13 to three after the missed extra point on that drive. And Penn Cambry marching again, gonna go back out to Garrett Harold. Gonna throw a dump off to Vinny Children for a 10 yard touchdown reception. And that can back up 21 to three after the two point conversion. And right before halftime, Harold again, gonna roll out towards his right. Gonna find a Luke Shugis. Going to shake and bake for a 15-yard touchdown. The Penn Camry up 35-3 before the end of the half. They would win 42-17. Big win at home. Chestnut Ridge ends the season at 6-4, and, and Penn Cambria moves to 9-1. Let's take a look now at some of our other games around District 6. Northern Bedford ends their season a perfect 10-0. They'd win 37-14 over Cambria Heights. And Northern Cambria would take their road test and beat Connemouth Township 34-20. Let's take a look at some more scores as Richland, the undefeated 10-0, will beat Central Cambria, the 3-17, 52-26, as Glendale will also win their matchup 49-23 over Kerwinsville, a 3-17. Dubois would fall at home in a close contest against, against Hollidaysburg. Hollidaysburg would win 36-35, and Cumberland Valley would win at home a big win over Altoona, 37-6. And Chambersburg will fall in a really tough matchup for them to the undefeated State College team, 36-7. And Juniata Valley will take the victory over Mount Union at 26-22. But let's get ready as the Mar Marauders get ready to host the Bison at Mansion Park in Altoona. After a 53-yard opening kickoff return, that'll happen after the team rushes out onto the field. It's going to be a highly touted matchup. And the Marauders, Coper Rother, will have a 37-yard touchdown drive on the first offensive play in the game, making it 7-0 Bishop Guilfoyle. But let's put him down on the five-yard line, and Kevin Ressler will try and fake out the defense, but he also fakes out our cameraman and will score, making it 7-6, still Bedford after the failed two-point conversion. Now, with only 336 left in the second half, even weather will juke out several more, not, uh, uh, including a cameraman this time. He'll juke out them and score, making it 12 to 7 Bedford. After a scoreless third, Bishop Guilfoyle will take it down the field. Chase Kissel fires it downfield and will be picked off by Ethan Weber. And on the ensuing drive, Ethan Weber will do it on the defense. He'll do it on the offense and he'll rush it in for 45 yard touchdown, making it 18 to 7 Bilford, Bedford after another failed two point conversion. Version. Bedford will hold on to this one as they'll win this game 18-7 over Bishop Guilfoyle. They'll improve to 7-3 on the year and Bishop Guilfoyle will fall to 7-3. Now for Mifflin County, hosting Redland tonight as the fans get excited in this blackout. Starting towards the end of the, the first quarter, quarterback Landon Eichhorn throwing a 64-yard dart. Going to find Isaac Wilson going to... Speed past the defenders on the far side for the touchdown. Mifflin County earned it 14-0. Now start of the second quarter. Icord, this one not going to go too well. Overthrowing his defender, Brady Seiler. Going to get the interception. That drive wouldn't go anywhere, anywhere for Redland. Now middle of the second quarter, it'll be Quint Quinlan Sh Shearer, the Redland quarterback, getting it right back. An interception going the other way. And Mifflin County's drive going to be stopped right there. But two minutes later, Icorn throwing an absolute dart. Going to find Brody, uh, find Parker Kearns. And that would lead to this play. Icorn going to go down towards the far side. Dupree Reed going to find the end zone for six. And Mifflin County would lead 20 to nothing at halftime. They would lead 41 to seven in this one. And the senior dinner dance happening as well. Proposal actually happened in this. So Dub's going to be catch off the field as well as on. And Mifflin County would improve to 6-4 and four on the season while Redland falling to 2-8 and eight with the loss. Coming up, a look at how Penn State prepares for its battle with the Buckeyes. But first, we'll show you some out-of-town scores from around the PIAA. We'll see you after the break.
Hello and welcome back to After the Whistle, brought to you by Com Radio, Center County Report, and Penn State's Chapter of Awesome. One player in Western Pennsylvania is turning heads with some mind-blowing stats that top some NFL stars. Joe Callahan Jr. made the trip to Oil City to find out more. About two and a half hours west of State College is Oil City, Venango County. It's home of the Oil City High School Oilers. They've won three district championships since 2016 and are seven and two this year. Much of their current success is tied to star running back Ethan Knox. Well, even last season, my first year playing running back, I was uh, carrying the ball a lot. So going into the off season, I kind of knew what my role was going to be for this football season. So it's kind of what I trained for. We weren't throwing the ball very well that year. And uh, this year is the same. We're not throwing the ball very well, so we're, we have relied on Ethan to carry the bacon. Taking handoffs is hard as is, but the level that this kid is doing it, what made you think that he was built in a video game? Earlier this season, Knox was believed to be the only high school player ever to reach 2,000 yards in just five games. Officially, He's only the fourth high school player ever to eclipse 3,000 yards in just nine games. He has the most of any player over that stretch. His eyes are now set on 4,756, putting his name in the conversation with Tyler Ebell, Tennessee Titans star running back Derrick Henry, and the all-time record holder for a single season, John Giannantonio. It's definitely something that kind of sits in the back of my mind, but... With that being said, it's in the back, so I try to focus on the uh, task at hand, which right now it's winning games, and right now we're focused on playoffs right now. While no official offers have come in yet for the junior back, he has visited Pitt and Ohio University. That list is likely to grow. In Oil City, I'm Joe Callahan, Jr., reporting for After the Whistle. Oil City hopes Knox can continue his record-breaking production into the playoffs. After a dominant whiteout victory over Minnesota, Penn State looks to pull off a major upset against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Evan Papalis has more. Fresh off a big win against Minnesota, the Nittany Lions now face a much tougher challenge. Number two, Ohio State rolls into Happy Valley, and the Buckeyes are led by Heisman hopeful C.J. Stroud and an offense that's averaging 50 points a game. Coach James Franklin says the Buckeyes bring a ton of talent. And the quarterback, you know, makes big time accurate throws. It's a small window that he's able to thread the ball into, not only with arm talent in terms of strength, but also accuracy. Penn State is 4-0 and at home this season, but the Lions face their toughest task yet on Beaver Stadium grass. The head-to-head -head series between Penn State and Ohio State has not treated the Nittany Lions too fairly over the last decade. Penn State just 1-9 and nine against the Buckeyes during that span. And since the turn of the century, Penn State just has one win in 20 tries against AP poll top five teams. That lone win, 2016 at home versus Ohio State. The Buckeyes have scored on all 36 red zone opportunities. So when, when you talk about red zone offense, when you're able to run or throw the ball, uh, that's, that's valuable now. The Penn State defense is expected to have pass rusher Chop Robinson back for the game, but the offense will have to be a bright spot if the team wants a chance to win. In University Park, I'm Evan Papalis for the Center County Report. The Penn State Stripeout is set to kick off from Beaver Stadium on Saturday at noon. You can listen to the game live on Penn State's Com Radio. Well, AJ, it's going to be a tough contest for Penn State trying to get back in the win column against the Buckeyes. Yeah, and this will be a big test for them, and maybe they can make a push for a Big Ten championship game if they can actually take on and beat Ohio State tomorrow. Well, the postseason is right around the corner, and while the weather is getting cold, the games are only starting to heat up. But until then, I'm AJ Sisson. And I'm Logan Mirandis. We'll come back with the playoffs next week on After, After the, the Whistle. Whistle.